Welcome to Civilspedia Current Affairs Digital Library. So today we are going to see the following topics like the Sankai Festival, Allied Healthcare Professionals Bill 2018, and India gets UN Environment Award based on prelims perspective, and India and Bill Gates model of sanitation based on mains perspective. So first, let's move on to a prelims topic, Sankai Festival. So why this festival is in news? So why it is very important? So as the name indicates, okay, this is a festival of northeastern state of Manipur, okay. So they call it as an annual extravaganza of culture, okay. So this is held annually from the year 2010, okay. So it started from the year 2010, so it's held annually. So this is a 10-day festival starting from 21 to 30th November every year. So it's mostly held in the state Manipur, okay. So then this festival can see an enormous participation of tribes, nearly 32 tribes and their performances in dance and sports, etc. So this is a part of Actis policy, which was initially started as Luki's policy. Okay, it is initially started as Luki's policy, but later changed to Actis policy. As we know, the Luki's policy was started in the year 1991 by the then Prime Minister P.V. Narsimha Rao. Then the Actis policy was started in the year 2014 by Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Okay, so this festival is considered to be the grandest festival and its motto is to promote the Manipur tourism to a world class promotion. Okay, then this festival got its name from the deer named Sankai deer which is a state animal of Manipur. So let's see about Sankai deer later then now we see some other aspects of this festival okay. So this festival was inaugurated at a place called Hapta Kejimbung's palace in Imphal the capital of Manipur by the minister of defense Mrs. Nirmala Sitharaman okay. So this festival had seen a commingling that is a grouping of troops from Manipur, Thailand, Myanmar and Korea. The guest of honor for this festival is Maha Chakri Sirindon, the princess of Thailand. Okay. So the for the first time this festival is conducted in five venues apart from Info, the capital of Manipur. Okay. Then what are all the other importance of this festival, so the highlights of the festival. So we can see there are a lot of dance forms and sports involved in this festival. The first one is the Ras Leela. So Ras Leela is a part of classical dance of Manipur. Okay, it talks about the Leela of Krishna and Radha. Okay, then the folk dances like Kaibul Naga dance, Bamboo dance and Lai Horobo dance which is a precursor for Manipuri dance. Okay, then we will see some of the sports like Tangta. So Tangta is a martial art of Manipuri dance. Okay, it's a part of Manipuri dance. It involves the game of spears and swords. Okay, spears and swords. Then UB Lakpi which is nothing but rugby, rugby played with cotton with coconuts okay then mukna kanchi which is nothing but a, but a meaning of hockey and wrestling hockey and wrestling okay it involves both hockey as well as wrestling and sagol kanchi which is considered as polo which evolved from manipur okay then this new year at this year's addition is sumo wrestling which is of most interest to many of the people okay then now we'll see about this sankai Okay, so this Sankai came from the name the Sankai deer which is also known as brown antler deer which is also known as dancing deer. Okay, it is also known as dancing deer. So this is an indigenous and endemic species present only in a place called Loktak Lake. Okay, so why this deer is known as dancing deer? Because of this movement because the Loktak Lake is known for a biomasses okay so biomasses is present which is known as fumdis in local way they are known as 
fumdes in local names they are called as floating biomasses which is present in the southeastern part of cable lamjao national park this is the world's only floating national park okay so and it is considered as an endangered species according to iucn red list okay other important part of manipur include manipuri is the one of the classical dance forms present in manipur and the world famous ima market so ima market is the world's only exclusive market for women which is present in manipur so these are the important facts based on prelims regarding sankai festival and manipur okay now let's move on to our next topic which is allied and healthcare professionals bill 2018 okay so before moving to the bill let's know what is allied and healthcare professionals so they are the important part of health sector okay they are the major major part of health sector but they are mostly unregulated so let's know who are allied and healthcare professionals so we can we have seen that lab technicians x ray technicians optometrists audiologists diabetologists dietists so these are the important allied and healthcare professionals they form the pillar of health sector but the problem here is most of these professionals are unregulated okay they are neither categorized in medical council nor in the nursing council so this bill came as a, at a prompt time to regulate these healthcare professionals okay so let's see about the bill okay so this is news because cabinet has approved to standardize the education and services given to this allied and healthcare professionals so this is a very important move so what are the provisions given in the bill so let's see that so for the provisions they have de decided to establish a central and state allied and healthcare councils okay so these councils will help to educate and regulate these healthcare professionals and also they establish a professional advisory bodies okay professional advisory bodies so they will independently regulate examine and recommend the provisions related to these councils okay so there are nearly 15 categories of these healthcare professions and they are divided into 53 streams so this bill will regulate all these 53 streams of healthcare professions okay then this bill also provides the structure function and composition of these center and state councils okay then the most important point of this bill is this bill will override all the existing laws which are relevant to these councils so this law this bill will prevail than any other laws which are already present okay then what they have given us the state council will recognize which are the institutions needed for giving healthcare education and there are class called offense and penalties clause this will give this will this is aimed to prevent malpractices in these councils and also it empowers central and state governments to make rules on these councils then the center government is empowered to change or amend any of the schedules in need of emergency so these are the major provisions of this bill now let's see what are the potential of this bill okay so we have seen that there are more than 8 to 9 lakh healthcare professionals in india who are still unregulated so they can be regulated and they can be brought on board with this councils so this is the potential of this bill then they can make this healthcare sector more skilled and job potential and they can make it as more professional okay so this is another potential for this bill and we can see that this came at a time of the professional vision of ayushman bharat so ayushman bharat is the national health protection scheme it is considered to be the world's largest healthcare scheme okay so this uh, this covers nearly 10 crore families in india okay this covers nearly 10 crore families in india and gives a coverage of 5 lakh per family okay 5 lakh per family this is based on socio economic cost census of 2011 okay then we can also see that this has a potential from changing towards doctor led model to care accessible and team based method so these are the potential of this bill then what are all the 
what are the beneficiaries of this bill okay let's see the existing professionals who are already in profession they will be streamlined to the main stream then the graduating professionals they can get professional education so that they can be regulated and the entire population will be benefited because of this regulation and healthcare sector will be regulated so this aims to fulfill our sustainable development goal agenda number 3 which is the quality health for all okay then we'll move on to our next topic the india gets un environment award so this is an important preliminary point of view let's see that so what is this award okay so india got asia environment enforcement award so this was given to the wildlife crime control bureau okay this is given to wildlife crime control bureau for combating this transboundary environmental crime okay so transboundary environmental crime this is given in the category of innovation okay there are different category for this award so this india got award based on this innovation category so what are all the innovations done by wildlife crime control bureau of india so let's see that so they have developed a database okay that is wildlife crime database management system that helps to analyze the real time wildlife crime and it also helps to prevent the poaching and other wildlife crimes associated with it and they also involve the local people to fight against this wildlife crime so they made the local people as wccb volunteers so these are the innovations made by wildlife crime control bureau okay now let's see about this asia environment enforcement award so this award is given to recognize and celebrate those who have enforced this environmental laws and prevented this transboundary environmental crime okay then they will be given this award will be given to both individuals or government officials or any other organizations that combat this transboundary crime okay they transform this crime then what are all the criteria for this award there are criteria like collaboration impact innovation integrity and gender leadership for india it is innovation okay now let's see what is this wildlife crime control bureau so we have to know about this so wildlife crime control bureau is a statutory organization formed under ministry of environment forest and climate change under wildlife protection act 1972 it is based on wildlife protection act 1972 so this aims to combat organized wild crime okay it is combat organized wild crime so what are all the works done by this wccb let's know that so they organize and collect the information regarding this wildlife crime and they share this information to the enforcement agencies so that it will be helpful to combat this wildlife crime and they also create a wildlife crime data bank so this will help to know, share the information to other agencies which is useful for the crime management then they also coordinate with foreign authorities or international organizations to know about this wildlife crime and they also advise customs authorities okay customs authorities to combat this flora and fauna crime like they work on the principles of wildlife protection act then based on sites okay convention on international trade on endangered species and also based on exim policies okay so based on all these principles they combat the wildlife crime okay now then they also involved in many of the operations like save kurma thunderbird and birbil these are some of the operations done by wildlife crime control bureau and they have arrested more than 350 criminals who committed wildlife crimes and they have also saved so many wild lives from death and their welfare now let's see about this un environment so this is the organization who has given this award so un environment is nothing but united nation environment program so this was formed in the year 1972 based on United Nations Conference on Human Environment it is headquartered in Nairobi Kenya okay so what are all the works done by this UN environment the most famous are clean up the world and earth hour so these are the major campaigns of UN environment so with this we conclude this prelims topic now let's move on to our main topic india and bill gates model of sanitation okay let's see what is that so why it is a news okay so 
Bill Gates is making a serious business promotion. We recently had conducted a sanitation conference in Beijing. Okay, in that conference, he had holded a beaker full of human feces. Okay, so that to create awareness. Even our World Bank president. Jimmy Ong Kim praised Bill Gates as making the poop cool. Okay, so it's a major praise for Bill Gates. And what he said is with this sanitation. So he wanted to create awareness about sanitation by reinventing toilets. Okay, with this reinvention of toilets, he can expand the sanitation and he can also control the children from stunting and malnutrition in most of the developing countries, which is a major issue. Okay, so why it is important for India? Okay, why it is it important for India? There are major reports regarding malnutrition and this open defecation. Let's see about that first. According to UNICEF, 22.2 percent of under five year children, okay, under five year children, nearly more than 150 million of children in around the world are stunted. Okay, this is the major report given by UNICEF, and according to World Bank. Due to lack of sanitation in many of the countries, the annual healthcare cost has increased to $260 billion. That is a staggering amount. Okay. Then, according to Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, they had said that children play around the feces and they contract disease from these feces without knowing it. And it also leads to most of the waterborne diseases where children are most susceptible to these diseases. Okay. Now, let's see about sanitation in India. Okay, according to Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, so India's urban sewage treatment is very poor as low as 30% of treatment plants are functioning. About one third of the sewage are not at all functioning. So the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation stresses to function to make function of all these treatment plants. And they have focused on rural areas. So India is nearly seventh largest country in the world and more than 65 percent of population lives in rural areas but rural areas witnesses high amount of malnutrition mostly due to poverty insanitation open defecation and low level of education so in the recent two years there are more than 100 million toilets were built but most of the toilets were underutilized okay then what they have said is without these toilets the open defecation is more that leads to pollution of water okay so that creates waterborne diseases like diarrhea dysentery estrechia coli infections so these affects mostly the children that causes stunting and malnourishment in children okay so what are all the solutions they had given okay so the major revolutionary solution they had given is decentralization of sanitation we know india has major focus on sanitation and we have swachh bharat mission for sanitation but our sanitation mission is completely centralized okay it is like a top to bottom approach but bill and Melinda gates had advocated for a decentralization of sanitation because a country like india with a fast expanding cities the massive urban sewage plant are not relevant okay they wanted a personalized individual treatment plants okay so it must be based on individual not a massive sewage plant so they wanted a decentralization of sanitation so they have compared this decentralization like where a world had a mainframe computers but they, they had revolutionized two personal computers so the, just like that this centralization of sanitation must be revolutionized to decentralization of sanitation so how it can be done so this can be done by the multi-user reinventor toilet which we can see in the picture so this have an aesthetically designed and chemically engineered toilet that uses this zero emission omni processor okay this is an omni processor this emits nothing okay this emits nothing except water okay except liquid and ash okay so this ash can be used as fertilizer and this liquid can be used for any purpose other than drinking so this is a non-portable liquid which can be used for any other purposes then they have also asked for a nation policy to make accessible for every people so they can be made accessible only by cost effective models okay for this reinvention reinventing toilets bill and melinda gates had already invested more than 200 million dollars okay for creating this new technology in the year 2011 
and they are ready to invest more 200 million dollars to make this technology accessible in developing countries like India. So to, to your information, this technology is already in trial in India where Tamil Nadu Coimbatore and also in South Africa in Durban. Okay. So these are the important information regarding this. Then what are all the way forward? So how to make the sanitation effective? So people saying that the most important issue of India is open defecation. So by aligning this open defecation with religious beliefs, so people will abide to these religious beliefs and they use toilets more religiously and they also celebrate this religiously. And they wanted to make this Swachh Bharat mission, which is the major aim of Swachh Bharat mission is to eradicate open defecation. So for eradicating it, it advocates three pillars. So one is provide and maintain the infrastructure so that the toilets will be more accessible to the people and it will be clean. Okay, not just built, it must be used. Then motivate people to change the behavior because still most of the toilets are built, but most of the toilets are not at all used by the people because of the social stigma. So it, there must be a breaking of this social stigma and harness cues and automatic habit. That means it must be done by policy makers to stimulate the excitement of the people to use these toilets so that the people will move from open defecation to toilet. This will increase the sanitation. This also aims to fulfill our sustainable development goal agenda number six which is sanitation and clean water okay so this is advocated by bill gates model of sanitation okay recently in 2017 based on this swachh sarvekshan survey conducted by quality council of india it is said that 62 percent of rural area are with toilet facilities and with this 62% of toilet facilities, more than 90% of people are accessing to these toilets. So with this technology, this will help people to end this open defecation method. It will end the stunting of children and it also end the death of workers who work in septic tanks. Okay, So this is actually a revolutionary technology which must be in which must be implemented in a country like India, which sees a mass stunting and malnourishment among 30 to 40 percent of children. Okay, so this is a need of our. So India must think on it. Policymakers must think on it. Okay, with this, I conclude today's topic. So please like, share, and subscribe to our channel. And thank you.